you have to say now. But I need you to make my video interesting. Okay, fine. Go. You may go. You may go. I still love you. <laughs> Hi guys. Welcome to another video. Before I begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sumo Lounge for sending me this massive but super comfortable thing. I call it a couch, but it's not really a couch. Um, it's a lounge. Is it a lounge? I don't even know. It's just super comfortable. As you can probably tell, it doesn't really fit in my um, home. So once I'm finished making this video, this is actually going to go to my parents' house because they have a much larger um, place than myself. So I'm going to have to part ways with this beautiful thing, but it's so comfortable. Like it just shapes in your body. So thank you so much, Sumo Lounge. I'm going to link to them down below if you guys like these kind of things, especially for gaming. You should get it. Or I might actually, I might give this to my mom and keep this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still deciding, but just wanted to give a quick shout out. And I'm going to make my video on this today because it's mine now. Um, for this video, I decided to pull together 10 questions that you guys have been asking uh, frequently. And these questions were asked in many different ways. And I'm just itching now because I'm a little bit allergic to my cat. So if I start breaking out or dying through this video, you know why. But um, uh, these questions were asked in many different ways, so they're not all asked the same way. It's just like, it's asked by many people with different wording. So I just kind of generalized them and made 10 questions who, that talk kind of about that topic. And hopefully I can answer your hot, heated questions. But uh, let's let's just get into it. So one of the main questions I get asked is, workout and health um these questions range from like do you diet do you go to the gym or is belly dancing a good source of like a way to a way to lose weight and the way i can answer that is i don't diet um i hate being hungry i hate feeling like i'm starving i've done it before in the past actually as a teenager i used to be quite overweight so um i do still have that fear of gaining all that weight back um so even without thinking about it i'm always kind of um trying to eat healthy or as healthy as i can but not going as far as like depriving myself of food that i really like i just have it in moderation so i will still have a burger i will still have things i like but not every day right and if i'm gonna have that burger that day i will make sure that i have a smaller breakfast so just uh, staying within a certain amount of calories that are reasonable for me that day. Um, if I'm not working out, 1,500. If I am working out, 1,800, 1,900. So it really depends. And this, these numbers like jump around and it's probably gonna be higher for you, especially if you're a guy, but um, that's just basically what I do. I do try to go to the gym, but um, I was out of the gym for about a month, just this last month and um, today should be my second night being back so as you can see I still kind of I'm not very good with it and as far as the question of whether belly dancing is a good way to lose weight yes and no um, it depends on what you do so uh, it's a great way to be active but if you are trying to lose weight really how you eat is very very important and also um, working out actually working out like nothing really beats working out and the best way that I do it is actually doing weights. I rarely do cardio nowadays because it never really worked for me, but with weights, I feel stronger. I'm getting some definition, but that's kind of my, my opinion. But yeah, starting, honestly, eating healthy is the hardest thing to do. Everything else is easier. Um, another question I get asked is something like, we always see pictures of your mom. Where's your dad? <laughs> my dad's right here. Um, I don't really post pictures of my dad because he's more shy compared to my mom. My mom is, she was kind of shy in the beginning to be honest because she didn't have Facebook. She kind of did, she didn't really care about social media and she would like now and then show up on my selfies. I have like fur on my face so I'm gonna be touching my face through this entire video until they all come off. But yeah, so my mom, she, um, she kind of started being in my selfies and, and uh, later on she showed up in a couple of my video blogs and people really adore her so um, she was like oh your, your fans are so nice so she 
um, opened up her own Instagram and she is quite passionate about iPhone photography. I bought her a DSLR. She only likes to use a DSLR when she's photographing for me, for brands and things like that because she's like my official photographer now. So she's really good actually. Um, but with my dad, he's a lot more shy. He is, um, yeah, he's just really not interested in just, you know, being in, in front of a camera. So obviously just because I'm on the internet doesn't mean I'm going to have like everybody in my family forced into it. So um, there are people around me that I never really show off because they're not very comfortable with being in front of the camera. But yeah, so I hope that answers your questions. I sometimes try to sneak him in because that's my cat. Um, sneak him in so that you guys can see a little bit of him, but yeah, he's, he's, he's around. Um, and another question in relation to that is how my family sees my art. What the hell is she doing? How my family sees my art. So like what my family thinks about maps. Um, basically, once you put something on the internet, there is really no way to hide it. So if you're trying to hide something, don't post it on the internet. So um, obviously they know what I do and surprisingly they're all in support of it like um, of course my parents were very nervous in the beginning like we wouldn't really talk directly about it um, because I know that whatever I did they would get worried of course like who wants their child who is like 20 you know in middle of a metal show dance it doesn't really make much sense so it was like a lot of quiet moments in the beginning and then later on you know obviously when I travel, I tell them that I'm going to these places and they're completely in support of it. They know that I I wouldn't ever do anything stupid and I started soon eight years ago. So, you know, if I was to make some kind of massive mistake and, and make a choice that I would regret just because I'm, I'm inexperienced or ignorant, that would be kind of earlier in my, in my path. Um, so now I'm a lot more, um, I think twice before I say something or do something even more because there are more people now and you don't want to disappoint them and you really don't want to hurt yourself. I do Mapsun because I love doing Mapsun. I don't do it to earn money for myself. I don't do it to, it's not my career, um, it's my passion so I don't want to ever do something that hurts me with it. So And they know that and I already do have a career in the medical field and I finished school so you can't even say like, oh you know, you're not doing things that are important, but you're doing art. So I finished all those um, important things in my life. Another question in relation to belly dance is criticism about metal belly dance. And if I've received people criticizing me in regards to that. Earlier when I started this, for a couple of years, I didn't receive any kind of criticism whatsoever. People were completely in support of it. Um, metal, he metal heads were completely in support of it. They still are. Um, and you know the thing is like once you put yourself out there um, in the beginning let's say you have a thousand people that watch what you do um, and two people don't like it it's gonna be two out of a thousand right and then when you have like 80,000 it's gonna be like more people math right I don't even know but you're gonna have more people judging what you do so it sounds like it's a higher percentage of people but in reality not really like of of a large group of people, you are bound to have some that disagree with what you do. That's just the beauty of the internet. That's the beauty of having an audience of different backgrounds, different beliefs. And while for an artist, it's not amazing to have a critical audience, it just comes with it. Once you're on the internet, you are gonna have a different audience, right? So not everyone's gonna agree with you. And so yes, I do have people that dislike it, but the thing is, um, and, and some people say something hilarious, like I'm appropriating um, the Middle Eastern culture, but I am Middle Eastern. Like I'm actually, I do have Iranian, I have Turkish, I have Arabic in my blood. Um, if anyone was to be offended, it would be me and my family. And they absolutely love what I do. And for me, I, I like to think of myself as completely open-minded. I love seeing other girls from other backgrounds, other skin colors, from, from every different religion and, and race embracing the beauty of belly dance, whether they like to mix it with metal, with traditional music, with um, with rap music. I honestly love it because it's that's the beauty of belly dance. Um, those girls allow me to say that 
that's my cat making sounds. Those girls allow me to say that this dance is for everyone. And for me, as a Middle Eastern, I love watching other people do this dance. I feel proud knowing that other people love one of the art forms from my culture and from my background. And um, so I kind of giggle a little bit when people get offended that I'm dancing belly dance and I'm changing it up a little. It's stupid, but um, I do get criticized for it, but never in a serious way. Um, I've never had any collaborations canceled because of it. It's never really affected me in a real way. So for that, I am thankful um, that people that I do collaborate with are open-minded. Bands that I have danced to have all loved it. Um, uh, bands I've danced with obviously wanted me up there. Uh, and generally, you know, the metal community is, it consists of very, very open-minded people. And that's why I love, I love the community so much and I respect it so much is because they're open-minded to that. And um, I feel like I've heard more criticism from normal people, like people that are not, neither into belly dance nor into metal. It's just people that are observing it because also belly dancers have been very, very open-minded towards me and, um, you know, have been very respectful and, and I have friends from uh, hardcore metal fans and hardcore belly dancers that really like this. So it's usually people that are in neither group um, and that's totally fine. That's absolutely normal when you're on the internet. Um, questions about stage fright. Do I get stage fright? How do I handle it? Things like that. And uh, the answer to that is I never really had stage fright. I of course get nervous before a performance. That's completely normal, but I never had stage fright with Mahafsun. I had stage fright when I was doing theater acting. Um, I was like really young. I was in high school and um, I would freak out and have panic attacks before it. But that's again because it wasn't really natural for me to be up on stage and acting. Um, I loved it, but it wasn't natural to me. So for me, dancing on stage feels very, very natural. Like because I'm playing in a way a character, Mahafsun. Mahafsun is like another side of myself, it's an alter ego. So um, it's like I put on a mask. I'm no longer Farouk. It's Mavsoon, right? So it's a lot easier to go on stage when you have that like alter ego and Like for me Mavsoon is confident, right? She's she's like I'm confident in my real life as well But I'm not as like serious as Mavsoon is so it's nice to have that veil and that cloak because it makes you feel more protected up on stage because you know you're playing this character or you're and honestly, every artist that I've talked to, like metal bands, singers from metal bands, and um, other dancers, they also have said the same thing. They have this alter ego because that that very confident, you know, egocentric looking girl on stage is actually not why I'm in real life. So, but it is a character that looks very good on stage um, to keep. But I like to shed that image when I get off stage because there is no point in in having that like egocentric ways but yeah stage fright i wish i could help but um i've never really experienced it with as, as being a dancer but i'm pretty sure if i ever have to like sing on stage i would be terrified so um i might have to ask you guys how to handle that so yeah whew. question about fangs are my fangs real where did i get them from are they permanent do they hurt do i drink blood the fangs are not real. They are custom made by an artist named Father Sebastian. He's a fangsmith. Um, he creates fangs. He's also the person behind the Endless Nights events, the Vampire Balls, the Conclave Festival that I recently performed at. That Austria Castle thing was all him. Um, and yeah, he custom made the fangs for me. My first pair were made um, from uh, an impression, impression of my teeth that I sent over to the US. He doesn't do that, but um, he made an exception because I, I was I didn't have any um, trips planned that we would be in the same place at the same time. So, and then my second pair, the double fangs that I like to wear more often, were made in person. Uh, that was made for me, um, in. It was made in person in Manchester, UK, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was in Manchester, and then yeah, that's where yeah that is where it was, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so if you guys want to know more, um, I will link to his website down below. You can figure out how much they cost and how you can get them done. Uh, he does travel, so if you can catch him during one of the events, like one of the vampire balls or vampire salons, um, or I think you can also just book him. 
look into that. Yeah, the fangs are amazing. Um, I prior to that, um, I never really wore any fangs for photo shoots because um, none of the ones that you purchase for Halloween are very good quality. So, um, yeah, his fangs are really just amazing. They just they transform your entire face. It just it like adds this mystery and this beauty that um, is otherwise not there. So it's really fun. Yeah, that's the question about fangs. Do they hurt? Yes, they can actually cut. They're very, very sharp. Um, mine are very big, so when I wear them for more than like six hours, um, I have little cuts inside my um, lower lip because they do touch that area quite a lot because this is not natural for you to have them, right? So um, uh, depending on how you talk and how you, you know, speak, you could like... For me, I, I get little bits of cuts here if I wear them for long periods of time and I'm talking. Um, but then again, I wanted mine to be like extra long and terrifying looking. Um, but yeah, that's the question. Yeah, they, they pop right on and off because they're made for your teeth. So they create a vacuum around your teeth and they stay on. Um, yeah, and for if you want them to stay like even longer or even more like secure and absolutely not fall at all they wouldn't but if you want to be sure denture glue is your trick but um, yeah so another question balancing life and arts so balancing life like my career um, and my work with maps and um, I get this question asked in so many different ways and it really all breaks down into like this basic question of how do you do it and what is it like so I um, I work um, casual uh, in the medical field, I work in a laboratory, so in a medical laboratory, so we deal with like patients' blood, we deal with patient specimen, and we run tests on them, and depending on what the doctors want. So it's in a hospital, and there's an outpatient and an inpatient. So we have people that come to the laboratory to get their blood work done, and also people that are sick in the hospital, they've had surgeries, um, we have an emergency, urgent care, and um, we just go around, collect blood, we bring the blood back to the lab, we so we do um, perform phlebotomy, um, uh, and then we bring the specimen back. We um, do any work on the computer that we have to do to identify that everything is correct, and then we figure out what tests need to be done. We basically do everything from centrifuging, aliquoting, um, and just preparing the specimen all the way to the point where it is given to the technician, and then they run the tests, and then they report the results to the doctor. So that's my job. I love it. Um, I actually, as of recording this video, I have been out of the laboratory for over a week and um, I really miss being back there. So I'm already like waiting for a shift to come up. So uh, another question of, as a part of that, I will actually make a video dedicated to what I do later on, like my experience going through school and, um, and uh, graduating and then working in a hospital straight out of it. And I was actually very lucky to get hired by the place that I'm hired. Um, I do still talk to my classmates and they all have various different um, experiences where they got hired. Mine is by far the best, I have to admit. Um, my group is a little bit smaller. We have a we have a pretty decent sized hospital, but our laboratory is quite small. We have a very small like lab family, so um, and I absolutely adore everybody I work with. People there are like family to each other. So um, once you walk in, you feel supported and you feel um, so respected and and just yeah supported and. Uh, that's one of the best feelings, and I've worked in many different places before, um, just basic day job places, and I never felt this amount of support. And, um, I, and now I understand when people say like you love what you do. So I, I love working there. It never feels like work. Every day is so different, and it's so rewarding coming home at the end of the day knowing that you made a difference in that person's life and um, a small difference, but you were there and you were a part of it. So. Um, all that cheesy stuff aside, that's what I do. I work in a laboratory and um, I, I'm, I'm casual, as I mentioned. So this means that um, this month is a this month has been the slowest month of my career in that field um, because everyone's back from vacation. Casual means that they call you when they need a person. So if there is any research, they need an extra person there. We also do research in that hospital. Um, uh, they will call you they need extra people they need extra hands um, it's not a set position that's the thing so it is a position like you are the casual in that place but it means that um, 
you could work certain days, you might not have a shift in the next two weeks. Like it's very, very much like that. So for example, the last couple of months that I worked there, I had shifts like every week, especially during December. And I would, if I was in Vancouver during November, I would have had, I would have probably worked like almost full time because there were so many shifts that needed coverage. Um, but so the beauty of it is, if I'm gonna travel to the US for a week for a performance, a collaboration, um, or anything like that, I can just um, and I can just let them know that I'm going and go without a problem. I can have any days to myself to focus on Madison. The that's the upside, I, and I can choose to say yes or no to different shifts. So um, I very much have control over um, when I do work, but I have no control over. Um, whether shifts come or not so that's kind of the tricky side about it when you're casual you get the benefit of um, saying no to shifts that don't align with what you're doing right now um, especially if you have like a family or if you have kids um, the downside is you might not have a shift for two weeks which is kind of the case right now so it's a little bit unstable in that sense but um, nevertheless it's amazing I love where I work so um, that's if that's the downside I'm okay with that but how I balance it is that, that's that's one of the ways I balance it is that I'm casual. Um, I am able to take a day off if I really need to finish something, if I really need to travel for a performance and an opportunity, um, I am able to do that and I'm supported by my workplace to do that. And um, uh, another way is just, I wouldn't say, I, I don't organize myself as well as I'd like to. Um, I'm better at giving advices in that sense than taking my own advices. So um, I try to be as organized as possible. So I have this little corner that I never show you guys, but it's boxes upon boxes of stuff. And in the corner, it's um, a bag covering a lot of clothing that I still have to shoot. Um, that's a way that I, I visually keep in mind that I still need to shoot that headpiece. I still need to shoot that, that brand, that makeup or that clothing. Or that vape stuff um, and once I'm done they're allowed to go into my closet or they are gonna be sent back to the designer depending on the deal that we have going on so that's kind of one way that I keep balance of which stuff I have to shoot still I have it visually staring at me in the face from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep it's kind of a mess but it stresses me out and makes me realize I have to do that um, and that's one thing I do. Another thing is de-stressing as much as I possibly can, surrounding myself with things that are de-stressing and comforting, good smells, diffusers, um, relaxing teas, good music. Um, sometimes I just take some time off and play my PS4 um, for like half an hour and it just de-stresses me because nothing else can destroy your balance your life and art or life and career balance more than stress so um, and just just plan your day out I guess the day the night before I, I like to use my um, my app here the to-do list app thing um, uh, and then I just put all the tasks that I have to finish that day and then I have another list of tasks I have to finish that week so I try to get through all the ones that I have to finish today and then if there's one that I have to finish that week I'll move it to tomorrow's so um, that's one good way to visually keep in mind what I have to do. I always have my phone at my hand, so um, it's it's always in my face reminding me that I have to do it. And it's difficult, I have to admit. It's one of the hardest things, uh, to the point where the other day my mom was here and she kind of stopped and she's like, how do you do this? And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, how do you, I've seen you do math soon since you were like a teenager. It's eight years, as I mentioned. So she's just like, how are you still doing it? Like, how are you? There's, you're doing a lot because I will do these long shifts at the lab. It's very enjoyable, but it is exhausting, mostly mentally exhausting than physically. And then you come home and you still edit and you still make a video and you know you still dance and do all these these interactive things with people. So it is hard, like it, it's very difficult, but um, you gotta just do it. Figure out what works best for you. I tried so many things. I tried to do like written to-do lists, didn't work out for me. Um, and even now some things don't work and I have to change it up. So that's how I balance my life. Another question, is Mapsun my main source of income? No, it's not. Um, nowadays I have to admit it does make enough money to support itself to an extent. Um, and, and some, like when I have to do big purchases, like I 
and soon I'm gonna have to get my um, computer upgraded. I, I mean, I'm keeping the computer obviously, but I gotta um, get the RAM upgraded, um, and it's pretty slow, so I gotta change up whatever I have to, and uh, that's that's one of the things I have to do. And um, those bigger purchases, obviously, I have to like use my own money to do it. But um, Mapsoon does, in a way, fund itself for the main thing. So um, in the beginning, I used to say I, I wish that Mapsoon could at least make enough money to. Um, you can see her tail just going back and forth. She's very impatient. I'll be done soon. Um, uh, I used to say that I wish that Mabson would make enough money to rent the studio and because uh, studio rental is pretty expensive. I didn't rent the studio for a long time, that's one of the things I have to admit. I was not really into it. Um, I'll talk more about it maybe in another video, but um, it's been over a year since I've been to the studio. I did record belly dance videos during performances and I went to the Stanley Park forest area which I love to dance in with my mom this time, but um, studio rental is my next goal. I just really need to get inspired again. Um, so now I can. I can easily afford um, a studio rental. If I sell a couple, of, a couple of prints on Etsy, I can fund my next studio rental session. Um, but when you get into the art field, unless you make it big from the start, like unless you have a connection in there, or unless you're born into it, like you're born into a family of artists and you just have a connection, which was not my case, unless you have a lot of money to begin with, which was not my case, you need to have something to throw yourself back on if it does fail, which it will. Very, like more likely you will, you will hear so many no's before you hear a yes when it comes to collaborating and work. Um, with Mapsoon, I always knew that I'm never gonna completely depend on Mapsoon to pay my rent. As I live in Vancouver, if you guys even do a little Google search, you'll realize it's one of the most expensive places to live, and it's ridiculously expensive. Our houses are no better than other apartments, so, but just rent is just ridiculous. Living cost here is ridiculous, and I was raised here. I can't really get up and leave. This is my home. Like, it's, it's the city I'm used to, so I have to do things in order to live here, which means in my case, I had to go to school. I graduated and now I work in a hospital so that is one way that I survive is that that's how I, I survive. Mapsoon doesn't make enough money for me to live off of it for my entire life it's not like that and I've had a couple of opportunities to push Mapsoon to the place where I could probably make a ton of money overnight but it's not the lifestyle I want to have I don't want to get into that chaos it, this is my escape it's like my little baby I don't want to I don't want to make it into this thing that I absolutely hate um, hi, yes, so yeah, I don't want to make it into this thing I hate, um, and, uh, you're distracting me now, you're so cute, you're so cute, but yeah, so, um, I have to actually have a career, so I really suggest if you guys, um, look at that, look at that, Billy, I didn't do that to her, that's my parents, she's with me now, so she's on a bit of a diet to lose that little belly we're playing to, but, um, I really suggest going to school for something, something practical. Um, I always really was interested in the medical field. I was really interested in laboratory science, so I actually got into something that I'm, I'm passionate about. And look into it. The medical field is definitely one of the places where um, people will always need you in there. Um, people are always going to be sick. People are always going to need help and need caring people. So look into that. Don't just jump into becoming a rock star. It doesn't work like that. And I can tell you that. I don't have that lifestyle either so hear it from someone who is like supposed to be there um, and I'll, I'll tell you it's it's not like that um, do you get free clothing and accessories yes and no um, so with different brands we have different deals I, I do a different kind of contract with anyone that I work with sometimes there's no contract it's just a collaboration so it's a trade um, and sometimes I know the people and I shoot their stuff and I send their stuff back because one, I may not need it, two, it probably isn't something I, I want to keep or I'm that um, passionate about keeping and somebody else can make money off of it. So it really depends on who I'm working with. Um, the yes part is when there's a trade. And I say yes and no because it's not really free. Um, I actually get paid to shoot because I, it's, I spend hours shooting, preparing for it 
putting on the makeup, going to locations. So most likely I, I had to cab there, so I'm spending money. Um, and then um, I may even have a photographer with me. So, you know, there's two people involved. Um, and then when I come home, I have to go through the images. This takes another couple of hours of retouching and editing the pictures and um, sending them back to the, to the person, to the, to the sponsor or the uh, person that I'm collaborating with, the designer or company. Um, and the editing process really does take the longest time. I love editing, but it, it is still time consuming. And um, so it's not really free. You're not getting free clothing. Um, I would otherwise be paid. If I wasn't getting the clothing, I would be paid for doing that photo shoot because there's also the aspect of um, they're being promoted. They're actually being promoted to a certain audience that actually likes their stuff. So um, if you do this kind of promotion anywhere else, even if you just try to do an ad on Facebook, it costs a lot of money. So you're, you're doing this more interactive, more um, collaborative way of doing an ad. So you're kind of hiring a model to do it for you. So um, long answer. I don't even understand if this one washes here. But yeah, so yes and no, you do get free clothing, but they're not free because I'm working my ass off for them. So, um, and yeah, the, the deal I have with brands are different. They vary from trade. So they send me their stuff. I do my services for free. I, I do the photo shoot for free for them and they don't have to pay. I don't have to pay. Um, it really, those are the things I do with brands that I absolutely love and I actually want to wear. Um, brands that I really do wear every single day and I, I, I do want to have in my closet. So um, other things are paid. So um, if another brand comes up, I, I'm not 100% passionate about what they make or the style and, you know, no disrespect, but we all have a different taste, right? So um, if I can't really benefit from it or if I don't really love the outfit or um, if I'm not going to keep the outfit, then of course they would have to hire me as a model. So it's just different and it varies so much based on whether the company is a bigger company, a smaller company. Of course, I'm not going to like slap a huge price um, for my services for a, a tiny little company that's willing to have me keep their stuff and I really like their stuff. So um, it just it varies based on who I'm working with and that's the nice part about it. I'm my own manager. I, I, I basically um, get to say yes or no. So. Uh, it's really nice but yeah so do I get free stuff yes but not really because I actually work for them and sometimes I have to book a day off from work to do the collaboration so I'm even like losing money um, shooting sometimes so um, and the last question for today this is a long video but it's really fun chatting with you guys last question um, how would I label my style is it goth is it alternative is it metal um, I like the term alternative because it doesn't really have another label stuck to it. Um, I like to, I, my style varies from more gothic to more, this is a very like, I guess, gothic Lolita style. I don't, I would say this is like a romantic goth. Um, it's this beautiful shrine dress that I absolutely love and it's mine now, so I love it. Um, but yeah, so I would say, and street goth, new goth, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's why I like to call it alternative because if I say I'm goth, then you know, very goth people, hardcore goth people might feel a little bit offended because really, I I'm not. I don't I don't wear gothic clothing or proper gothic makeup, but it's inspired by goth. Um, uh, it's just, I love the term alternative because I get to wear whatever the hell I want, and I would still be considered alternative, and nobody gets offended. But no, I absolutely love. The gothic fashion. I love street goth, kind of like the Killstar look. Um, I love um, this Victorian um, high fashion goth, which is like something like I'm, what I'm wearing now from the Branch Shrine of Hollywood. Um, I, I get inspired by so many different styles. Um, that yeah, I also love like the more fantasy goth. So things where you know there's a tiny little like delicate little hair headpiece. Thing. Um, more fairy goth. I love everything in, in the alternative gothic beauty thing spectrum. Um, but yeah, that's how I would label myself. I would just say alternative because you just slap that on and you're good to go and nobody 
you, you're not really, you're not supposed to be in a little box. Um, never had that problem to begin with, but that's just a, a good way to avoid the problem. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna get going now, and I mean, we're gonna get going now. And uh, just thanks again to Simo Lounge for sending me this very comfortable chair. I wish I could keep it in my place, but it's just massive. Um, I may need to get rid of my couch, but I really like my couch, and it costs me a lot of money, so I'm gonna keep the couch. Um, but yeah, this is gonna belong to my mom after this video. But I might visit her place and, and make another video on this on this beautiful couch again. And yeah, thank you so much for sending this. I absolutely love it. It's super soft. And it is pet approved, apparently. So thank you guys so much for watching this very long video. It's more than 30 minutes long. But um, I just really wanted to get into detail with, with all of these heated questions um, that you guys are asking. And there are plenty more, don't get me wrong. This is just 10 of them that I like, it popped from the top of my head. Um, there are so many questions that people keep asking over and over. Some of them, I don't know if I really wanna answer, um, so that's why I don't mention it here. I'm not ignoring it, I do, I do realize you guys are asking a lot of questions, but, um, and some of them I'm not really interested in answering right now um maybe down the line i will mention it or touch base on it but just want to point out four well, four of them ten of them that i <laughs> that i've really been asked right now and maybe down the line i will make this into like a series on the second channel and just sit down and have a long chat about the stuff that you guys are asking um maybe some more generalized stuff as well that could actually help you out um i know that most of the answers here are very personal and I wasn't really able to give you guys much tips about like how to balance life and art and you know what I do with stage fright because it was just about me, right? So maybe down the line I can uh, help someone in these videos and kind of give you some tips and tricks and yeah, stuff like that. Let me know if you guys have any more questions and I'll see if I want to answer them. And thank you so much for watching this video again and much love to you. I will see you in another video. Bye.